Hey everyone, what's going on? So in today's lesson, you will not only improve your English vocabulary and pronunciation, you are also going to expand your mind with some super inspiring clips from a recent interview I had with Hadar from Accents Way on the Beyond Borders talk show. But before we start the lesson, if you are new here, I wanted to share what our community member Yuya said. So our channel has helped them to achieve goals with their English that they never thought was possible. And we want to help you on your English learning journey too. So just remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so that every week we can help you to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Okay, so imposter syndrome is this feeling of, first of all, not being enough, uh, the inability to celebrate your achievements and successes because you think that inside you're a fraud and everyone is going to find out that you're a fraud sooner than later. So it's mm -hmm. like, even if you were able to achieve something or do something that you should be proud of and other people you know, admire you for it and, and they recognize it, you can't own that because you feel that it was a fluke, right? And you know, like maybe now it, was, it worked out, but you know, next time it happens, they're gonna find out that I don't know English or I'm a bad teacher. It's a psychological pattern. Uh, but it usually hits hard marginalized communities, people of color, women, LGBTQ, and, mm -hmm. you know, from my perspective, also non-native speakers of English. And then as a teacher, you also have to become an authority and teach and tell other people what to do in a language that sometimes you feel insecure in. Because, you know, even me, till this day, there are moments where I'm like, oh, that was a mistake. I don't know how to say this. Um, you know, which preposition should I use? And uh, when it's not your native language, there's always going to be that little, that small doubt, no matter where you reach. And that is okay. Like, if you try to resent that, that is the problem. That is like the ongoing battle. That is the fa that is what causes this, this imposter syndrome. Like, you need to accept that. Uh, the inability to celebrate your achievements and successes because you think that inside you're a fraud. If you accuse someone of being a fraud, you mean they're not what they claim to be. A person who is described as a fraud might be lying in order to get an advantage. Example, he said he was raising money for the victims, but he's nothing but a fraud you should be proud of and other people, you know, admire you for it and, and they recognize it. You can't own that because you feel that it was a fluke. When we say that we own something, we take responsibility for it or we accept that it's true. For example, we have often said that Sofia Vergara is an example of someone who fully owns her accent, which means she is proud of it and doesn't want to hide it. We also say this as a phrasal verb, own up. So, understanding natives, communicating confidently with anybody. So, not just connecting to native speakers, but connecting with that global community. And the final one is, is just owning up to your global citizenship and connecting to the world. What does that mean to own up to something? Own up to something means to take ownership, take responsibility for it in some ways. Mm -hmm. A fluke is something good that happens because of luck. Example, him making the game-winning goal was a total fluke. It's a psychological pattern, uh, but it usually hits hard marginalized communities, people of color, women, LGBTQ. LGBTQ is an acronym that stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, which are all different sexual orientations and gender identities. In some cases, the LGBTQ community, people of color, and women are considered marginalized communities meaning they don't enjoy the same privileges or even rights as the rest of the population. And they suffer from discrimination. And then as a teacher, you also have to become an authority and teach and tell other people what to do in a language that sometimes you feel insecure in. If you are insecure, you don't feel confident in your abilities to do something. Example, stepping outside of her comfort zone has really helped her overcome her insecurity. Oh, that was a mistake. 
I don't know how to say this. Did you notice the features of connected speech that Hadar uses here? Let's take a look. First, she says this phrase as, I don't know. Sometimes when we speak fast, instead of fully articulating the D sound in don't, we use what's called a flap D, which is a quicker version of it. I don't know. Listen to how I pronounce these two versions of this phrase. One is the standard pronunciation of the D consonant, and the other is with a flap D. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Another thing you might notice in the version with connected speech is the T gets dropped. Then she says the next part with a bit of connected speech as well. The T here is also a flap T. Listen. How to say this? Oh, that was a mistake. I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to say this. Hadar emphasized in this interview that she has spent countless hours focusing on pronunciation to have the near flawless accent that she has today. Now, you don't need to speak like a native. You can be a successful and confident English speaker even if you maintain your accent. However, it is important that you can understand natives even when we use connected speech and speak fast. And this is exactly what we will help you to do in a really fun way with our Fluent with Friends course. Now over 48 weeks, you will learn with the first two seasons of this timeless series, which several academic studies have shown is the best series out there to learn American English. With vocabulary memorization software, so you never forget anything, PDF power lessons, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? You can try it absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below to sign up now. And uh, when it's not your native language, there is always going to be that little, that small doubt, no matter where you reach. And that is okay. Like if you try to resent that, that is the problem. That is like the ongoing battle. That is the fact, that is what causes this. If you resent something or if you show resentment towards something, you feel angry or upset about a situation. Hadar here is explaining that some people resent the fact that they have an accent when speaking English or that they're not completely fluent. You might say, for example, that someone resents school if they don't have fond memories of their school days. Example, I resent working long hours. Then she talks about the ongoing battle that is improving your English. Ongoing means happening over a long period of time. And battle, as used in this context, is an attempt to solve a difficult problem or change an unpleasant situation. I think in an ever more globalized world, something that I think is becoming like more and more crucial is really to create environments where people can have like high level empathetic conversations about controversial topics like this and obviously um, Israel is a, is a really big one. So how do you believe or, or how are you doing this in your own community? How can we create an empathetic dialogue about these sorts of topics? Well, first of all, we need to address them. It's so mm -hmm. easy to say, no, that's politics and we are here to learn English. A lot of people don't agree with me and, you know, I have paid a price for speaking up for this and for other things in the past, but you know, this is what I believe in because I want that for my students. And also as you know, I have a, a big community on Facebook, the influencing community of people from mm -hmm. all around the world. And we, we do talk about these things and I felt that in this case, not to talk about something that is so close to home would be hypocrisy because I can't talk okay. about Black Lives Matter or what's happening in Colombia and not talk about the, 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 this conflict, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. I'm not gonna lie, it's not, it wasn't easy because in my community we really have those two, um, it, it, it's such a diverse community and we have people with, with, with very distinct opinions that are opposing. Um, so to be able to navigate that required a lot of attention and also trust mm -hmm. that people would be able to do it. And while some people were not appreciative of this conversation, most people were. And we were able to 
foster and a good discussion where people express their pain or um, what they're feeling. Again, this is such a hot topic. This is such a, an emotional topic. So again, saying that it wasn't easy would be an understatement um, mm -hmm. for, for the people involved and for me, but we were able to contain it. And I think allowing this is a reminder for everyone that English is a bridge and is an opportunity to bridge between people that usually don't have that place of contact. I think in an ever more globalized world, something that I think is becoming like more and more crucial is really to create environments. Something that is crucial is extremely important. Example, if you get lost in the forest, there are some crucial survival skills that you should know. When we want to emphasize how important something is, you could also say vital, or in a more formal tone, say that something is of utmost importance. Example, it's of utmost importance that the department manager listens to their subordinates. Now empathetic comes from empathy, which refers to the ability to understand another person's position. Do you know how we could say this colloquially? To row the same boat as someone? To put yourself in someone's shoes? To have the same strokes as someone? Just so it's important to like try and understand and be empathetic to other people's cultures. Where people can have like high level empathetic conversations. Be careful not to confuse empathetic with emphatic which is how you would say something when you want to express an opinion in a clear, strong way. So if someone comes to you and they say, oh, I passed my exam, you could say, oh, nice going, nice one. And it's kind of like, it's not as emphatic as sensational. How do you believe, or, or how are you doing this in your own community? How can we create an empathetic dialogue about these sorts of topics? Well, first of all, we need to address them. If you address a problem, you start trying to solve it. We could say that at Real Life English, we've recognized the big need learners have to practice their English speaking, and that we've addressed that issue by creating an app that does exactly that. That said, if you would like to be able to speak English anytime, anywhere, at the press of a button, with short but powerful conversations, and make friends from every corner of the globe, then I recommend you download the Real Life app for free. It really is like virtually traveling around the world. So you can click the link down in the description below, or you can just search for Real Life English in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. See you there. It's so mm -hmm. easy to say, no, that's politics, and we are here to learn English. A lot of people don't agree with me, and you know, I have paid a price for speaking up. To pay the price for something is an idiom that means to experience the bad result of something you have done. Example, we stayed up all night partying instead of studying for the exam, so now we're paying the price. Then, in a literal sense, to speak up means to speak louder. Example, speak up, I can't hear you from over here. However, in a figurative sense, it means to express your opinion in a way that shows courage. Example, she's speaking up about inequality. In this case, not to talk about something that is so close to home would be hypocrisy because I can't talk okay. about Black Lives Matter or what's happening in Colombia. When we describe someone as hypocritical or as being a hypocrite, we mean that they pretend to believe something that they do not really believe, or that they do the opposite of what they say. Hypocrisy is the noun form of this word. Example, he's such a hypocrite. He talks about how much he cares about environmental issues, but I always see him littering. Black Lives Matter is a political and social movement that protests against incidents of police brutality and racially motivated violence against black people. I'm not gonna lie, it's not, it wasn't easy. We use I'm not gonna lie before expressing our honest opinion or something that might sound surprising. Example, I'm not gonna lie, I actually had a great time with Tom. He's not the jerk I thought he was. A similar expression is I must admit. So I couldn't really say anything, so I got quite frustrated. And I must admit, there were a couple of times where I just walked out of the shop because <laughs> I was so frustrated. And while some people were not appreciative of this conversation, most people were. If you are appreciative of something, you show that you enjoy something or are pleased about it. Example, 
She's very appreciative of the opportunity she was given. You can use this as a noun. I wrote them a letter to show my appreciation for all the help they gave me. And we were able to foster and a good discussion where people express their pain or um, what they're feeling. To foster means to help a skill, feeling, idea, etc. develop over a period of time. This is a verb that we often use to talk about our vision at Real Life English, which is to foster connection and appreciation among people from all over the world through what we call global citizenship. Again, this is such a hot topic. This is such a, an emotional topic. So again, saying that it wasn't easy would be an understatement. A hot topic is a controversial topic of discussion. Take a look at this example with the word understatement. Example. To say that it was cold would be an understatement. We use it to indicate that what we say is not strong enough to express how good, bad, impressive, etc. something really is. And I think allowing this is a reminder for everyone that English is a bridge. You might know that this is a bridge. As a verb, to bridge two things means to reduce or get rid of the differences between them. In other words, to connect them. Example, the differences between our two cultures can be bridged if we continue to communicate. If you have enjoyed some of the topics discussed in this lesson, then I want to tell you the whole interview with Hadar was absolutely mind-blowing. You can download the full interview absolutely free and it is linked down below. And remember to put everything that you are learning to practice. You can speak English right now on the Real Life app and that is also linked down below. So I'll see you there. Okay, so imposter syndrome is this feeling of, first of all, not being enough, uh, the inability to celebrate your achievements and successes because you think that inside you're a fraud and everyone is going to find out that you're a fraud sooner than later. So it's <laughs> like, even if you were able to achieve something or do something that you should be proud of and other people you know, admire you for it and, and they recognize it, you can't own that because you feel that it was a fluke, right? And you know, like maybe now it was, it worked out, but you know, next time it happens, they're gonna find out that I don't know English or I'm a bad teacher. It's a psychological pattern, uh, but it usually hits hard marginalized communities, people of color, women, LGBTQ, and mm -hmm. you know, from my perspective, also non-native speakers of English. And then as a teacher, you also have to become an authority and teach and tell other people what to do in a language that sometimes you feel insecure in. Because, you know, even me, till this day, there are moments where I'm like, oh, that was a mistake. I don't know how to say this. Um, you know, which preposition should I use? And uh, when it's not your native language, there is always going to be that little, that small doubt, no matter where you reach. And that is okay. Like, if you try to resent that, that is the problem. That is like the ongoing battle. That is the fa that is what causes this this imposter syndrome. Like you need to accept that. I think in an ever more globalized world, something that I think is becoming like more and more crucial is really to create environments where people can have like high level empathetic conversations. about controversial topics like this. And obviously um, Israel is a, is a really big one. So how do you believe or, or how are you doing this in your own community? How can we create an empathetic dialogue about these sorts of topics? Well, first of all, we need to address them. It's so mm -hmm. easy to say, no, that's politics and we are here to learn English. A lot of people don't agree with me and you know, I have paid a price for speaking up.
for this and for other things in the past, but you know, this is what I believe in because I want that for my students. And also as, you know, I have a, a big community on Facebook, the influencing community of people from mm -hmm. all around the world. And we, we do talk about these things and I felt that in this case, not to talk about something that is so close to home would be hypocrisy. Because I can't talk okay. about Black Lives Matter or what's happening in Colombia and not talk about the, 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 this conflict, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. I'm not gonna lie, it's not, it wasn't easy because in my community we really have those two, um, it, it, it's such a diverse community and we have people with, with, with very distinct opinions that are opposing. Um, so to be able to navigate that required a lot of attention and also trust mm -hmm. that people would be able to do it. And while some people were not appreciative of this conversation, most people were. And we were able to foster and a good discussion where people expressed their pain or um, what they're feeling. Again, this is such a hot topic. This is such a, an emotional topic. So again, saying that it wasn't easy would be an understatement um, mm -hmm. for, for the people involved and for me, but we were able to contain it. And I think allowing this is a reminder for everyone that English is a bridge and is an opportunity to bridge between people that usually don't have that place of contact. But I think something maybe a little strange that I feel quite excited about that other people generally seem to not care about is uh, comparing our lives to the, the Middle Ages. <laughs> so the Middle Ages is like uh, any time from 1100 to like 14, 1500. 